Well, hello, I'm Ruth Thompson from Sylvan Skills, and today I'm going to be demonstrating making waffling doors. So I'm just going to talk about protective clothing and tools that we use for making girdles with. So I'm wearing gloves to protect my hands, and I've got knee pads on to protect my knees, and steel toe cap boots just in case I drop something on my feet. And also, I've got a sun hat on. Um, so the tools we use are there's a wooden mallet, I think it's called a mail, so this is just useful for bashing down the weave with. And then we've got a bill hook, which is quite traditional, and this, this can be used for cleaving willow and it's also used for brushing the hazel branches with. And we've also got some loppers, which are really useful just for cutting through the hazel at the ends. And lastly, um, the axe is used initially to put points on the zales. So that's about it. Okay, the, um, the materials we use are hazel for the weavers and the uprights. Um, we have a wooden former to build it on, which obviously the, the panel is taken off this eventually. So now I put a point on the other hazel rod and insert it into the former. start weaving the panel with the hazel rods. To start with we have two hazel rods. These are fairly thin because we're not going to cleave them. We have them facing in opposite directions. But this is a different pattern from the rest of the weaving in that it forms a sort of cross in between each upright. It's rather like cross stitch. This is called pairing. So in between each upright, I cross the rods over. This helps to grip onto the upright stakes and grip it holds very tightly. So I leave that there for the moment. And then I'm going to do some plain weaving with another thin rod. So this is just woven in and out. And we hope to put what you call a return on the hazel rod. You can't just bend them immediately or they'd snap, so you twist them slightly as they go around the end sail. It means that you have a nice neat return. to make sure that the outer sail remains upright, otherwise your hurdle will be a funny shape. <laughs> this hazel is still relatively green, which is why it will twist slightly. Right, so next we're going to try and cleave some hazel. This is traditional. It means you can weave thicker material than 
with the one-year-old rods. If you didn't cleave it, it would be too thick to bend. if you um, use your elbows and, and also um, push the end of the hazel against something on the ground. Come to a knot, it's a bit tricky sometimes. You may have to give it a bash, but we'll see. <coughs> oh, it's gone through. When we get our cleft piece, and we'll leave that in and out. Bash it down. <laughs> so you get a nice white face showing. Now I'm going to see if I can do a return with this. I have to twist it again. Make sure this doesn't get pushed in too much. Worth doing returns wherever you can, just so that it's um, a bit stronger. Right. I'm conscious that this zale isn't really long enough, so uh, I'm not ashamed to just add another bit in parallel to it and lengthen it. some plain weaving with uh, some thinner material. I've demonstrated the, the cleft material but I haven't got very much thick material left and um, so I'm sure that's what people would have done traditionally. They'd cleave the thicker material and they'd weave the thinner material just in the round as you say. Gym. <laughs> so I'm just doing a re 
turn on this hand, twisting the hazel around so it forms fibres like a rope, and then it won't snap. So now I'm going to put the top layer of pairing on. This is just slightly different from the rest because I'd rather not have any loose ends on the top. So what I do is um, I get the rod and I measure it against the, the panel and I'm going to weave in this thin end first so it doesn't stick out on the top afterwards. the daub mixture we use uh, equal parts of sand and uh, so this is just for on the builder's sand um, on the builder's sand and then we've got a uh, nice garden soil with a bit of hummus in it humus in it and um, just potter's clay um, so I mix it all up in a wheelbarrow I actually did this yesterday with a bit of water so that it, um, the water has time to mix in and it's called curing um, and then we just start mixing in the chopped straw which binds it all together you can see the mixture here and now I've got to mix some um, straw into it this is where it gets a bit messy um, I may have to add more water in, I'm not sure yet. I want it to be white enough that it will go on in caps, I think they're called caps actually. Um, 
but not too wet that it's sort of going to fall off. And also, it'll dry more quickly if it's the right consistency. But probably the best way to do it is literally to get your hands in. And traditionally, people would have probably did this, trodden it with their feet, or got animals to um, even walk over it, because you'd be making large quantities at once. And it is quite physically hard work to do this. And it's great fun. Oh, it feels really nice actually. Uh, I'm just glad it hasn't got dung in it. <laughs> um, yes, it's a composite material. Uh, I meant to say this. So the clay is, uh, I think, what you call a binder. And in some parts of the country they use lime or uh, something like that. And then the soil and the sand are just a kind of aggregate that bulks it up and gives it stability. And then the, the straw. Is, well, obviously it's a fibre, and that kind of holds it all together. Um, so, it, you, you do need all those different types of materials. Um, I think that's probably about right, actually. So, we literally just get a big, well, I guess it's not a huge ball, but a reason size amount. Just sort of squash it on and press it into the cracks. And it keys into the cracks, in some ways it's quite good to have gaps like this. And um, I think once it's dry, people then used to plaster it with um, a plaster made of lime. And sometimes they mixed in colouring with it. I think it was just traditional in different parts of the country. And um, the lime helps to keep the rain off. The plastic helps to keep the rain off. Sometimes people even put decorations in the plastic. Have little raised bits or little incised carvings on it. But obviously you wouldn't put that on until the, the door had dried. Now it's important to put it on both sides. And um, this mixture, it's actually breathable when it's, when it's sort of dry. It can take in moisture from outside and or moisture from in the building can gradually make its way out. Uh, which is quite healthy. So people are quite interested in this. In modern times, it's an eco-friendly building method because it um, has a low carbon footprint. It's not expensive, and uh, it does mean that your building can breathe. And it can be um, reapplied. I think traditionally people used to not so much reapply the door, but they used to reapply the lime mortar every year because it's slightly antibacterial and um, I suppose when they're doing that if there were any little gaps in the door they'd fill them in as well at the same time and that's so these these traditional buildings would last for a long time because they were maintained regularly Wallendorf have quite deep eaves, so that helps as well to keep the rain off. It would eventually try and wash off the outer layer. I think probably we need to um, just smooth it down a bit once, once we've put it all on. no cracks. And if there's a little hole anywhere, just put a bit more clay on it and squash it down. I, I, I imagine you would obviously do this in the summer because it will have to dry out. You wouldn't want to do this in the howling gale in November or something when the rain's lashing down. I think if you didn't have straw in it, it wouldn't really work. You do have to have the straw because that's
Hold it all together. So I'll just do a little corner there just to demonstrate. And in this weather, I think it'll probably dry out in about three or four days. And obviously you would have made this in situ in between the two upright posts of your building. You wouldn't make the panel and collide it with this and then try and move it because it would be too heavy. This is just for a demonstration. It is obviously fairly rustic, but then those buildings were a little bit irregular. But that's what people like about them. Thank you for watching. For further information, please visit my website, sylvanskills.co.uk.